Uh, all right, let's do let's do another one, one player, around thirty minutes. This is this is nice and quick and easy. Blah 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 blah. Uh, let's be this guy this time. We'll be Oz. I, I can okay. do this. Oh, we are the nerd. I mean, yes. Um, and we have to experience blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> yeah, we know what? who all these people are. I think we're gonna try Vera here. No, no, we gotta we gotta go for Polly. Uh, all right. Blah 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 blah. It's your chance to fix global warming. Go ahead. Global warming isn't real. I invented it, and now science is claiming all ship because science is a lame coffee gap with no original ideas. I'm kind of in love with that answer. It's time to be a real hero. I'll lead a mission to the sun in order to invite the sun to the party of its life. We'll have so many hilarious misadventures. The sun will eventually become cooler. Now nah, the world is doomed, but I'll start investing in ships and start a profitable business for the soon to be covered by water world. Global warming isn't real. I invented it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Of course. Of course. What would be the coolest prize you could find in your box of cereal? Phone number of that sexy tiger on the front of the box. He's so passionate about breakfast and health. He's surely also a great lover. Oh no. A sample of a more nutritious breakfast option so people are encouraged to stop eating that colorful crap. A tiny piece of sharp metal so every scoop will be full of thrill and danger. This. This is what, what I'm taking. So smart. Very smart. What criteria would you use to name your children? I mean, simple and friendly, like a Bobby or Mary. Eh, no name, it's just too much work. Just a swear word. I will research for a name that is pun-proof and joke-proof. No one will pick on them. A non-heteronormative name to give them freedom to define themselves on their own terms. My name plus two, the second. Pun-proof and joke-proof. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I think, I think we're going to go for Polly here. Um, okay. Okay. Loading, loading. All right. All righty. Uh... Yeah, of course. Okay, we started to rave again. Let's do fun. Wow. It's by Vera and Liam engaged in their favorite pass of a variation of people watching called Mouse So Grubbing. pathetic. Uh, do you see what she's wearing? Newsflash. Lime green stripper boots do not go with Chupacabra for so mainstream. At least she made a choice. I've already seen six people wearing the same Air Gorgon sneakers. You really are the lucky ones, Liam. Most people are just absolutely hideous. Even their hideousness is mediocre. Most people are hideous, but I've yet to see one who's the most hideous. wonder what such an abomination would even look like. Uh... True hideousness is on the inside, in your organs. A person with organs on their outside would be most hideous. <laughs> yes! Ha, yes, I've always said that a person's insides could be even worse than their shell. Passing hermit crab dragon hybrid glares at her, but Vera doesn't seem to care. I mean, unkempt eyebrows are gross enough, but an unkempt esophagus the mind reels. Guess we're romancing Vera here this time. We're trying to date Polly, and it's just not happening. I'll admit, as repulsive as I find most people, it'd be hard for me to ignore an exposed circulatory system. And there's nothing more hideous than being drawn to repulsive people just because you're thirsty! <sighs> mm, I can relate. I've seen Polly drawn to some pretty repulsive lowlifes herself when she's thirsty. Of course, that's a different kind of thirst, but the principle certainly holds. Ah, uh, the innocent joy of bonding over mutual derision of the appearance of others. <laughs> you can't plus two fun and plus one creativity. Alright, cool. Cool. Uh, Obviously, we're going to All right. cozy up to Vera. Can we date the tiger, I guess? I don't know who she is, but probably date her. The, the cat? I don't know. I don't know. As you approach the table, you see Vera delicately lifting a fork full of quinoa to her mouth. She brings lunch from home. When? Food, fork, six, eight. Who do we deliciate? Eating. Eating. Yay. Eating. Ugh. Ugh, Scott, what on earth are you doing? I'm cheerleading you to help you be the best eater in the whole school. What caused this obsession with cheerleading me through mundane activities that require no cheerleading? <laughs> Everything requires cheerleading, silly. That's why we have cheerleaders for our cheerleaders. I can see why my cheerleading's not working. You haven't eaten anything yet. That's because you keep startling me with your damn cheerleading. I can't eat when I'm startled. 
No, that can't be it. I must not be cheering leading hard enough. Hey, friend, maybe you can help me. You shouldn't be cheering for Vera to eat the food. You should be cheering for the food to get eaten by Vera in the walk-in freezer. The problem is obviously that we aren't dressed up as a giant salad. Oh, duh. It's just like when we cheer for the other team to lose instead of cheering for our team to win. Look at his face. That himbo. This is the most mind-melting idea he's ever heard in his life. Yes, I invented that cheerleading strategy. It gives us a huge psychological edge against teams that hate losing. I'm going to go try it right now. Those vegetables are going to get so inspired. Scott runs off to the kitchen to inspire the vegetables. You can still hear his muffled shouting from the back. But it's not bad. That has been quite pleasing. Oh my god. That voice I We can't play this game if they're going to give us voice cues like that. Um, can't can't have the can't have the, the the camera on for that. Oh my! Thanks. Now I can finally enjoy this quinoa and baby tear salad without unwanted encouragement. The next week, all the cafeteria food seems extremely eager to get in your mouth. Cheerleading really works. Okay. All right. Uh, library, outdoors, gym, bathrooms. Auditorium, uh, library. Hey there, cutie pie. I find your book. Let's chat. Heart. Well, that day you spent some time on the library's PC sending malicious spam emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. Doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose minus 10 karma, which isn't a stat in this game, so who cares? You gain plus two money. Nice. Afterwards, you discover you've been poisoned and only Vera has the antidote. She does this all the time. It's how she invites you to hang out. Hey there. I'm into that. There you are. Thanks so. Thank you so much for coming. I'm embarking on a new criminal enterprise. I need a consigliere. The idea is simple yet brilliant. Think Uber, but for killing people. They call it murder. I love it. Uh, Ma'am, you are perfect. Uh, but it turns out the market is flooded with assassination apps. Assassination apps and blood. I need a way to get ahead of the pack. And since you're such a good advisor. Uh, viral marketing, literally. Tailor a highly, highly contagious virus to make people love murder. You can do that? Great. Uh, <laughs> you can use my private chemical weapons lab. And so, this is working better than I ever could have imagined. Demand for murder has gone through the roof since we released that virus. Sure, the side effects include vomiting, bloody tears, male lactation, cobra feet, time dilation, rigor mortis, rectal teeth, renegade spleen, microaggression, sudden tattoos, hair trauma, liquefaction, and coughing. But it's well worth it for the profits I'm raking in. Uh, gotta love a girl boss. Uh, girl monster boss? I, I don't know what we... Any plus, uh, I'm making a literal killing selling people the antidote for all those side effects. Not actually an antidote, though. Actually, it's actually just heroin. Same difference. Uh, you know, they used to give heroin to babies as a cost suppressant? Yeah, the real world is exactly as immoral as this video game. But whatever, you gain plus two creativity and plus one money. Oh yeah, we're very creative. We're so creative and Vera likes that. Apparently. All right. Um We'll go to class. That day you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Blah 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 blah. Plus you smarts. Uh the sounds of learning, chalk on a blackboard, pencils on paper, an ominous crash! Seeing that Damien and Vera have knocked over several desks and rushed to get to one particular seat. Listen, snakes for brains. Don't you dare even think about... Back off, brimstone breath. I will turn you to stone before you can snap your oddly well-manicured fingers. <sighs> it makes you think you're worthy of sitting in the ultimate cool seat. I get more likes posting a picture of me flipping you off than you'd get for a full frontal nude. Ha, clearly you've never seen my nudes. Ever heard of Demon Douche Bros Texting.com? Well then, if my sex were are internet famous, I'm obviously the fucking coolest. I think being ridiculed on the internet makes you cooler than being on King Minus' list of wealthiest human hybrids under 300 years old? Okay. This could go on forever. Better settle it for them. Just fucking take the seat yourself before either of them can stop you. Shove Damien Vera out of the way and plop your butt down on the ultimate cool seat. You smirk gleefully at their admiration-filled speechless stares. But that's not admiration, that's horror. Your ass is smoking, and not like your ass is smoking isn't hot. Like it is hot, but in the literal sense. It's on fire. Your butt is on fire. You leap out of the seat, howling in pain, as a glowing legend appears across the chair back. The rush to whoever is not the raddest will totally get their ass lit on fire if they sit here. 
Well then, I guess that settles that. I mean, we may not know which of us is the absolute coolest, but we know who it's absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, here, let me help you with that fire. Uh, Damien's... Oh, boy. Uh, Damien's health comes in the form of stomping the fire out, which would be helpful, except the fire is you. You lose minus two fun, minus one coldness. Whoops. Whoopsie. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> All right. All right, well... Take your seat, and if you didn't know any better, you would say it seems like Vera and Polly were almost more interested in their phones than they are in you. You do know better, and you know that, yes, that is exactly what's happening right hey now. Hey there. Something personal, Oz. It's just Polly and I are very engrossed in texting our financial slave. Yeah! Yeah, it's pretty hard to compete with some guy whose fetish is buying you anything they want. You want. That's my fetish, too. Okay, well. Not buying things for people. Having people buy things for me. Duh. Good thing he's rich enough to take care of both of us. You know what they say, true friendship is sharing secrets and financial slaves. Still, I do worry that this arrangement might not be sustainable. What happens if he runs out of money? Our cash flow instantly stops, besides being handed everything you want on a platter. In this case, the platter being an online money transferring platform. It's almost boring. Yeah, I get that. It's a little less boring when you're on as much acid as I am right now. But I see what you mean. She's a ghost. How is she on acid? Where, where does it go? How does, it, how does that work? We can literally see through her right now. We could somehow turn this into a business venture, then maybe it would get interesting, and we could continue to profit, even after he's gone broke from catering to our every whim. I mean, how interesting do you think business actually is? Since he's so obsessed with us, we should just tell him to do something totally insane and see if he does it. Oh no, weirdo giving away his money and getting into hijinks is great and all, but I want to start making real money. And I think money is fine and all, but my favorite currency is chaos! Hmm, it seems like the ladies are at a very exciting crossroads. Maybe a random bystander can give them a nudge in the right direction. Tell them to marry a llama! You can easily grow this arrangement into a business. Just escalate and delegate. Have the financial slave go and acquire his own financial slave to give him money. Have that financial slave go and find a financial slave. Aha! That would increase our exp income exponentially. Immediately! Which are two of my... Absolute favorite adverbs when it comes to monetary gain. I mean, one financial slave between the two of us is already strangely a lot to handle, so managing an army of them sounds draining. But as long as it's a pyramid scheme and we're at the top of the pyramid where we don't have to actually deal with low lives, who cares? Eh, maybe I'll just go check on my toilet line. Don't worry about her, Polly wouldn't know a good business idea if it slapped her on the ass. Which happened one time, actually, but it's a long story, so forget it. Anyway, we can tell people in order... To become officially certified financial slaves, they have to buy a kit of supplies, and they'll start at dirt slave. And then if they get five financial slaves under them, they can become a pathetic ground slave. And then they can work their way all the way up to gold, diamond, platinum, Salchow mocha, grand supreme slave. This is a great idea, Oz. We should go write the business plan together and prepare to profit. Did, did Vera just say she wants to profit with you? Holy shit, Vera's sharing your cash flow. It's like third base for her. Awesome. I'd rather be on third base with Vera. Um, but... Cool. Cool. Alright. Um... Let's go to the library. Show me that money. Well, in my little shop, buy some shit. I have shit that will boost your stats. Shit that will lead you into stupid new adventures. Even some shit that might be much needed at some very specific moments. So take a look. We have eight cash. Uh... Good old blood rip. Okay, well, um, fake badass tattoo. Some impractical yet kind of funny glasses. Uh, creativity. Um, a Russian novel with an insightful approach to universal matters such as love and death. Uh, high school social hiring a PR agent. Um, good old cocaine. God, it's just a stack of cocaine. Peace on giving. Uh, a sexy fake Latin accent. Uh, fake badass tattoo, penguin mask. Kind of hot you're into that kinky shit. Um, uh, the fake tattoo, um, Street cred plus that. Um, hype station? I'm gonna get Thank the hype you. station. 
You know what? All profits made are donated to a good cause. Spoiler alert. Good cause is buying me a new phone. Sweet. Okay. Interesting that that's what that does. All right. Um. I kind of want creativity. Let's go to Arthur. Yep, yeah, we already got this one. Blah, 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 blah. Plus two creativity. In class periods, you discover a severed horse head in your locker. It has a note in its mouth telling you to meet Vera ASAP. I'm so glad you've come. I have another crime problem which benefit from your insight. Thanks for your input. Murder has cornered the market in app-based assassinations, and yet the other crime lawyers don't take me seriously. It's because I'm not a 40-year-old man with a scary scar. I was sexist moron, so this is just a phase for me. Since when did having a killer body and flawless skin disqualify a girl from a life of crime? It's disgusting. And I show these chauvinist goons what crime really means to me. Go on, think of something. You're my most trusted advisor. Uh, quit crime. We're crawling backwards to see how bad it is without you. You know, if this advice was coming from anyone other than you, I'd ignore it. But you haven't been wrong yet. Fine. As of today, I'm quitting crime. I'll let the other bosses know. I'm sure they'll be so pleased. A few days later, you're getting a manicure with Vera when she gets a mobile notification practically screams. Those punks! Do you know the ice pick and hungry mark by all the other crime lawyers to beach for a barbecue? They're posting pictures on Moment Graham. And so much fun selling murder heroin and murdering each other without me. Uh, I wish I was there. They'd murder all of them so much better than they're murdering each other. Do you see how Joey the arsonist is cooking? I don't see how there was a good answer there. Um, writing a song about it doesn't doesn't seem to... They're not even close for air. They're lost without me and they don't even know it. I never should have listened to you. Some advisor you are. Vera doesn't leave any more horse heads in your locker. You think that would be a good thing, but it's symbolic of a loss of trust between you. Lose minus two, fun, and minus one charm. Sag. Um, All right. Okay. 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 Here is. Private Paul and Vera's stable time in eating. Wait, both of them? Oh, yum yum. I sure do love food and eating. Look at this food going me. She's a coast. Hmm. Mm, yes, this cafeteria sloppy joe truly has a subtle flavor profile. Finally, you notice the cause of this absurdity. Well-dressed businessman sitting at the next table watching both men women intently. Oh yeah, I know you like this, baby. My eating is realistic and erotic. Be cool, Polly. The man wants to pay for us, pay us for eating in front of him, not screaming about eating. Is this not what eating is? I forget. Well, Vera tries to explain eating to Polly. The businessman shyly approaches you and gives you a small bow. Much obliged, friend, he says in a soft voice. Are these two fine ladies your friends? I must confess that I have searched far and wide for a suitable candidate to fulfill my rather unusual fetish, paying a student in high school for monsters to eat food while I watch politely from a distance. Very specific. Very specific. But I find myself unable to choose which of these two beauties dire snakehead one possesses a certain grace. Yeah, pay me, motherfucker. Pay me to do a thing I was going to do anyway. But the translucent one has such passion. I don't even want the money. This is just fucking weird and I love it. In your opinion, the businessman finishes which would be the wiser choice on my part. The Gorgon, obviously. Look how many mouths she's got on her head. This is and strokes his head, chin and nods. Mm, you have a point, he says. Ghost only has the one mouth. Also, food seems to go right through her. This Gorgon, meanwhile, has countless mouths. Such value. Value is right, Purvo. A thousand cash up front, you pay for all my meals, and give me your pants. Holy shit, he's doing it. He's doing it. He's getting naked. Where is able to convince this man to pay for a fancy dinner for you and her. It's a little creepy with him watching the two of you, but you get over it. We got a date with Vera, so I don't, I don't care that he's paying for it. All right. Um. That day, you're the first one in class. You sometimes come early because we enjoy talking to the teacher. He's a bit bitter, bitter, but in a cool way. He treats you like an adult. The two of you discuss life and stuff in a very snarky way. Look at you, excelling at cliched movie tropes. And plus two smarts and plus one valuable life insight that will help you face the difficulties of being young. Hey, Oz, remember that one time at that one party where you explained to me in great detail your brilliant secrets of the business world? Holy shit, you do not. And that doesn't sound like your area of expertise at all. You must have been pretty drunk. But it's Vera, so you smile and nod. Well, I will be attending a very fancy and important business dinner t event tomorrow tonight full of powerful people by exclusive invitation. By exclusive invitation, I mean I'm going to use my Gorgon powers to turn the concierge into stone and then sneak in. I'd love to see you put other people's money where your mouth is if you're not doing anything tonight. 
She just asses out on a second date, so doing well. You're planning on reorganizing your collection of very rare mint condition Pokemon cards, a popular trading card game based on even more popular video game pocket humans. Each card depicts a human being with a specific job and bio. I would play. Would play. I need that game. But that can wait, so when the time rolls around for the fancy business dinner, you shove them in your pocket and roll out. Oz, over here. Glad you can make it. I've been racking, raking in business cards hand over claw so far. Met Gertrude Gorgonzola, the Diamond Tampon Tycoon? That sounds painful. And Ray K. Beboff, the social media influencer rapper robot. And they've both been very excited to do business with me. How have you done so far? Uh, you turn out your pockets and show very the evidence of your endeavors, which consists of the lobby card for the hotel the convention is in and the only thing handed to you by a real businessman. A sticky note with the word no written in red sharpie. Maybe I should have invited someone else. Literally anyone else. No, it's okay. You still have an hour left at the end. It's time to pull out all the stops and choose an amazing tactic. You get as many business cards as you can to prove to Vera what a valuable business asset and or prom date you are. Oh my god. Trade Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards for business cards. Creativity and smarts. We gotta go with it. What? You stand on a chair to deliver a passionate, impassioned, unimpassive speech about the severity of your endless investment need for business cards. It's incredibly effective. They all shuffle through their wallets for your <laughs> for their business cards. Remember what Miranda once told you about rich people. They love staying ridiculously wealthy while using just enough of that wealth in ways that make them appear sympathetic. Thank you all so much for your generosity towards this poor, sickly, suffering, ugly soul. Uh, th thanks. I will be collecting business cards on his behalf to cure his compulsive, compulsively inolus. Compulsively inolus? Such so it's a lizard person who is also a do doctor? You can tell he's a doctor because he is wearing a lab coat and a stethoscope. This is how he always dresses, regardless of circumstance. Yes, I've read about the old business card cure. A hundred cards must be blended into a paste to be administered anally. Oh, God. This is an all mutter in agreement, eager to trust the doctor's authority. He's also wearing spectacles, so he looks super legit. Uh, I'll still be happy to be in charge of the collection. No, 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 says the lizard person. I'm a doctor. Everyone drop their business cards in the splendor that I always carry with me, just in case a medical emergency arises and necessitates making an anal paste. Oh, God. Oh, God. Fair tries to protest once more, but her convincing arguments are drowned out by the whirring of the blender. Your plan having failed, you sink away in disgrace before business cards can be shoved up your butt. Oh my god. After all, you've already lost minus two smarts, minus one fun, and Vera's respect. I thought smarts and creativity, that would be the answer there. That's very creative. Oh man. Oh man, that was rough. None of them, I think, is probably the answer. Alright, we're gonna give it a shot. She's gonna say no. All right, we'll, we'll subject ourselves to rejection for, for the for the cause. You finally plug up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. You're asking me to go to the prom with you? <laughs> what a shortcut to Lame Town! You're opening a MySpace account would be less harmful to my popularity than dating Ugh. you. I think I just puked prom in my mouth. With you? <laughs> Been rejected for the first time. No. Yep. The shame of your constant failure is just so great that you secluded yourself in your room for years and officially started dating your own pillow. <laughs> Waifu life forever. <laughs> oh. Oh. That was that was rough. That was rough. Most likely kitten anal bleaching. Oh god. I'm not being paid for this quote? This is outrageous. Yeah, that, that went badly. That that went badly for us. Uh okay. Very realized she was a character in a video game which infuriated her. She spent her life making connections and building power because she's not a part of the game. She plays the game! So be careful. Maybe now she's the one pulling your strings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liam honed his most admirable skill and got a job on it. He now designs momentgram filters. Okay. Okay, whatever. You just unlocked an erotic fanfic about dragons. This is about to get weird. Unlocked eight new images in the gallery. Cool. Yep, that, yep. 
more art. Uh, okay, I don't really care, but these are kind of cool. Um, oh, hey, here we go. Oh, this is this is neat. Fan art. Oh. Warps. 30 under 3,000. 600 invaders in 20 industries. Revolutionary world. Meet the class of 2018. Man, this is six years old. Monster Sonas. Oh. Monster Sonas. Oh, I kind of love it. Oh, this is really cute. People did their monster sonas. This is super cute. All right, 